everybody has an opinion. Everybody thinks they can tell you how to run your business. And I used to listen to all this stuff. Then I stopped. But at the end of the day, I know best. And I have to just trust myself. You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries. A community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Glossman. Buckle up for the ride, Femcanics. Christy Shipke is in the driver's seat today. Christy is the owner and designer of Crash Jewelry. She came up with the idea to create fashion jewelry from wrecked exotic cars when she moved her studio into her husband's Los Angeles body shop. Christy makes jewelry from discarded automotive metal, and her first obstacle was trying to figure out how to bend the metal from these exotic cars while preserving the original factory paint. Now let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B. And I have Christy Shimke. I said it right, and I did not add the R, didn't I? Exactly. Perfect. We we joke around. We were just joking around about how you have a nickname, and they add an R to your last name and call you (laughs) Shrimke. Shrimpy. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the correct pronunciation, listeners. It is Shimpke. So, Christy, <laughs> thank you for accepting my invitation, uh, for being in the driver's seat today on the Femcanic Garage podcast. I am very glad you're here, and I am excited to share your story. Thank because you so. I'm it glad is to be here. <laughs> yet another facet of this industry, and it's jewelry. Yes. I've been trying <laughs> to find the right person to talk about jewelry that is automotive centric. And I am so glad that you are the first one. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you. I've had different artists on the show, painters, uh, but you are the first automotive centric jewelry maker. So thanks. I am honored to have you on here. Did you always know that you were going to end up in the automotive industry in some way? Uh, no, not, not at all. Um, this was something I, I never in a million years would have thought I'd be in the automotive industry in any sort of, you know, capacity, I guess. Yeah. And, and it, it, we talked about this, but just so the listeners can be brought up to speed. When you went to college, what was your majors? Uh, art history. And, um, so undergrad art history and then uh, graduate school art history uh, with a specialization in Renaissance portraiture. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like in my brain, um, like envisioning your, your jewelry. And, and ah, so Chrissy, I have a um, 15 year old. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm checking myself. I'm like, God, they, they grew up so dang fast. I'm like, is that even possible? <laughs> She's going to be 15. She's not 15, Mm -hmm. but she's like the 14 going on 18 type. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And when I sit there and and I'm having these, what my kids call me lecturing, (laughs) Mm -hmm. actual legitimate useful life lessons that goes in one ear and out the other type of thing, (laughs) the parent lecturing, Mm -hmm. I've had the conversation with them around don't feel pressured to decide what you want to major in and don't feel pressured to have to go to college even. Yeah. Maybe a trade school is what's best for you. Maybe it's working a little bit first. Mm -hmm. Keep your options open. Don't let society pressure you into things. Follow your gut. Right. And I keep telling them, I'm like, don't decide on what you want to major on here. Here is an example where you major in art history. Now there's definite art to what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's not a direct correlation there. You know, (laughs) when you're thinking about Renaissance, forgive me. What was the second part of that? The focus Um, portraiture. 
So portraits. Right. Am I thinking about that, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. So here you are. You go to college. You get your degrees. Now you're done. What did Christy do after that point? You have these degrees. Well, I should tell you, it took me a long time to even get through college. <laughs> so, um, Ditto, we sister. Talking, yeah. When you were talking okay. about um, what you talked to your kids about, I, I was not prepared to go to college. And, you know, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. My parents wanted me to be a business major, which... I could care less about. So, but I did, I went in as a business major and hated it and basically dropped out. So I didn't go back to college until I was probably in my late twenties. And by that time I was ready, you know, so it took a while. I had to travel, I had to work, I had to, you know, just sort of sort things out. And I, I didn't know what I wanted to do either, but I had a mentor, you know, when I was in college uh, an art history professor that just blew me away. And that's, I think, really helped form my passion for art. And uh, so, yeah, so it took a while. And then once I got out of graduate school, um, well, I should say during graduate school, I had a, an internship at the Getty Museum. So uh, I would travel back and forth. Can you help people understand the Getty Museum? Because that that's a pretty prominent museum and and I don't want to just glaze over it um sure. because it's it's a teaching opportunity sure yeah it's a it's a it's a big place uh in that they have I think seven institutes um the museum is just considered one part uh, one um Institute, actually. So there's the Research Institute, there's the Conservation Institute, there's the Education Institute. I can't even remember all of them. Um, so I worked, actually, I worked in the Research Institute, uh, and then also in um, the sort of information technology part, and then at the museum. So I worked in three different institutes uh, while I was there. Like looking to see where you're at now, would you say what you're doing now is kind of like your happy place or kind of like your home. Not that you don't, there isn't parts of it that you don't love or that you don't get frustrated. Right. But like when I, when I launched Femcanic Garage, it was like a coming home for me. It's like, this is what I'm meant to do. Right. Do you feel that way about crash jewelry? Absolutely. Um, I mean, as a kid, I was always drawing, painting, making things, you know, very much into crafts with my grandmother and sewing. And um, I, I think, I was just always, as an adult, kind of a frustrated artist. So art history kept me connected to that side of me, um, but in a more academic way. But I still got to be around art all the time, but I just wasn't creating it. So when I finally got to where I am now, um, I realized this is my passion. This is what I really was meant to do and uh, what I love to do. Was there an event that happened in your life or something? Or maybe it was just like, hey, it's time. Yeah. What made it was, you switch? Um, well, I um, I kind of hit a wall as far as career growth went. Um, and it, it just got to be, uh, how do I say it? Everybody there, <laughs> I hope I'm not offending anybody, but everybody there is what I call a lifer. You know, they got very comfortable in their position. Um, the Getty's a nonprofit. You um, you're pretty much limited on what you can make, you know, salary wise. Um, but it's a it's a great place to work because you're not really pushed. Um, you can spend your whole day, you know, just working on one um, I don't know research painting, you know, and and it's it's like being in college almost. Um, so there isn't any real. Um, impetus to to get outside yourself or get outside or to, to grow in other words there wasn't anything to challenge me and uh, it just frankly it just got to be really kind of boring and uh, the other thing that was really frustrating is that you know I'm a pretty proactive person and that is not something that's really encouraged in that environment um, you know you had to have a meeting about everything like you couldn't just make a decision and go forward you know it was like we have to have a meeting about metadata and then 
a meta meeting about meditating. <laughs> you know, it, it's it just so got true. The, yeah, like the bureaucracy was stifling after a point, and uh, yeah. I, I don't. I guess I just don't do well with bureaucracy. So here, you meet this person, right? Mm-hmm. And you're getting ready to leave your job. I mean, yeah. talk about a lot of changes in your life, right? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, poof. And um, it kind of take me to that next step because you you meet him at that point. Crash jewelry isn't even a thing. No, it's not a thing. And so um, still working at UCLA. And uh, I came home from work one night and I was... I was really upset, something that had happened. And he said, you know, why don't you just quit? And I was like, well, I, I can quit. You know, like I can do that, you know, <laughs> because like I told you, yeah, I mean, I've always been very independent. And even this is my se- this is my second marriage, my first marriage. We had separate bank accounts. We had everything was separate. You know, I know. I, so when I met Dan, he was very much everything was inclusive. We're all, it's, it's not mine or yours, it's ours. So, um, I had to, in a weird way, that was hard for me to get used to, you know, like to, to trust this person. And, um, so one, like I said yesterday, one of the things I always admired about Dan is no matter what he got up every morning at four or 5 AM, you know, happy to go to work, excited to go to work, felt very passionate about what he did. And I never had that, never felt that way. And I was kind of like, you know, I, I would really love to feel like that sometime. So um, and we had talked about it. So when he said, why don't you just quit, you know, uh, after the wedding, just, just quit. Why don't you take some time off and figure out what you want to do? And I was like, really? Uh, I can do that. <laughs> you know. So that's what I did. And uh, just took some time and did some different things and uh, took a little while to get to crash, but finally got there. There's kind of a baby step. And and it may seem like I'm really drilling deep here, but there's a lesson in this journey and story, just like every woman has that. And I want to pull it out and make, make sure people really get it is that the idea is to put one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like you saw someone that loved what he does, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, heck, if he can have that, why can't I? It does right. exist, right? Right. Mm-hmm. It does exist because sometimes I, I don't know about you, Chrissy, but sometimes when I hear like certain things, and and that thing is the thing I want, but it seems so out there, like so Disney like. Right. Unattainable, unreal, because I, mm-hmm. I maybe I haven't seen it yet mm-hmm. with anyone around me. Do you know what I right. mean? Fill in yeah. the blank, right? Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, <clears throat> and yeah. and that's that one you were inspired by. Then the next thing is you actually did jewelry making before Crash, but it wasn't Crash, right? So I uh, I took started taking a a lot of classes and uh, in in metal smithing. And, uh, and I also had a mentor that I was working with. And I was just really eager to learn as much as I could as quickly as possible. So um, after a while, I got pretty good at at, uh, working with uh, silver and gold jewelry. And how long did that take you? um, It took about a year and a half, I would say. Yeah. And see, that's and was, important. Yeah. It's important for people to get. It's it's not like you took one class and boom. No, no. And I'm <laughs> right. still, you know, and I, you know, I, I'm limited. I can't, you know, I can do certain, I have certain skills, but there's other skills I just, I don't have, you know, like uh, stone setting, for example, there's, that's something that, you know, someone is highly trained to do and that might be all they do. Um, so uh, I started, jewelry company called Mina B, which was my grandmother's name. And um, it was just more traditional type jewelry, you know, like you'd see maybe on Etsy or something like that. And um, so I I had been doing that for about uh, maybe two years. And uh, I, 
I, at that time, my studio, I was working out of a friend's garage <laughs> and I was able to move into one of Dan's garages at work. So I actually moved everything over there and he gave me a space and uh, it was in the garage. And every day when I was working, I would see, you know, all the cars come in that were going to be repaired. And I, I, I mean, they were beautiful because they worked mostly on um, high end luxury cars and exotics. So here I am around, you know, I see a Bentley come in and Windsor blue and, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, like, I wonder what happens to this metal, you know, where does it go? Because the paint especially reminds me of enamel. It's so beautiful. And I wonder if there's anything I can do with this metal. So it just sort of started as an idea. And um, mind you, this was during the time when precious metal prices were going berserk through the roof. And I, I just couldn't compete anymore. It, it was really hard as an independent small business to compete with the big businesses. And um, there were a lot of people like me. So I thought, I wonder if I can take this discarded sheet metal and preserve the original, original factory paint and actually make jewelry from it. So it started as an idea and then I had to figure it out. So that's kind of how it started. Christy Shemke, owner of Crash Jewelry, and I'm a Femcanic. Hey, Femcanics, this is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, we appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a femcanic?